Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this video, I'm gonna do an unboxing and first impressions hot take on a pedal that I actually bought, a used pedal. I bought this months and months ago. I don't remember when, but I was going through some stuff here in the garage. And I was like, oh, what's this? I don't remember this box. I opened it up, it's like, oh yeah, I bought a pedal and I meant to film it. So what is it? It is the Dan Electro Fab Tone Distortion. Let's see if the invoice will tell me when I bought it. September 17th at 6.16 p.m. I bought it from Vintage Audio Restored in Trenton, off of Reverb, obviously. It was $50 and after tax and shipping, it was $58.88, so basically 60 bucks. I remember talking to Philip Carter on the 40 Watt podcast about these, and that's why I bought it, I think, because we were talking about how you can just get them for really, really cheap and really affordable, and they're kind of like a 90s classic pedal, but I'd never tried one, so I wanted to try one. Got the manual here. Bunch of suggested settings. Maybe I should do some of those. I never do the suggested settings. Totally awesome. It was the 90s, so that was sincere. That wasn't like ironic, like, oh, totally awesome. No, they were being sincere when they said that. There it is. Jeez, it is heavy, by the way. It's got to weigh like a pound and a half. There's no way that doesn't weigh over a pound. Ah, there we go, look at that. Vintage silica gel, aged to perfection. I'm not gonna let the kids eat that. I'm saving that for me and the missus when we pop open, you know, like a $50 bottle of wine. We want, you know, something to go with the, uh, the nice cheese and crackers that we're having. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Got a volume, a bass, a treble, and a fab control. Uh, we'll bring most of the controls up to noon before we get started. DC nine volt, no surprises there. I don't really know fully what to expect out of this. I know it's a distortion. I vaguely remember Philip saying that it kind of flirts with being a fuzz. So maybe it's like a muff that's on, you know, the distortion spectrum, but it's got bass and treble and distortion labeled fab. What if it's an HM2 clone? Four knob distortion? Might have to do a comparison at some point if it sounds close. It could be like just like a modified rat or something too. Whoops. I'm gonna use my Fender Made in Mexico uh, Player Plus Strat because it's been a really great workhorse for me lately. It's a, honestly an excellent demo guitar. It's got humbuckers, it's got singles, it plays really great, it sounds great. Turn off that delay. And of course, I'm running through my two Princeton's rig, as expected. Bridge humbucker setting. Sounds in tune, right? All right, here we go. What's it gonna sound like? Really, really nasal, right off the bat. All right, let's see if we can dial some of that out. Whoa, 
<laughs> That's a lot of lowing. That is a lot of low end coming through. This might make a good bass distortion. <laughs> okay, that's it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of EQ. A lot of low end, a lot of treble. If I dime them both, it's gonna be like ultimate mid scoop, right? That's, that's what we all wanted in the 90s. It legitimately is it's like the highest gain, most extreme mid scoop you could get. I haven't even turned the gain all the way up yet. Jeez. That is too much trouble. Does anything actually change across the range of the gain control? All right, it does decrease gain. I mean, it's already got plenty of gain on the lowest gain setting, but to my ear, when I turn it up, it buys me more lows. And it's like an extra gain stage being on stacked on top of an already aggressive distortion. This thing is a beast. Jeez. This, this is the sound of the 90s that we were all chasing. Like every teenager with an electric guitar would have just gone bananas over this pedal in the 90s. Like this is the sound we all thought we wanted. No mids, all the lows, all the highs, all the distortion. <laughs> a nasal quality that I can't seem to dial out without bringing the treble really high. Like it has this like lo-fi megaphone telephone sort of thing going on.
Yeah, I'm having trouble dialing out like this kind of like filtered blanket that seems to be over it, no matter what I'm doing. Like even when it's really super bright, there's this nasal blanket just filtering it a little bit. I don't think it's gonna sound anything like the HM2. I don't think at all. Like this is so, so mid scooped and the HM2 is actually pretty mid present and nowhere near as high gain as this. Like this sounds what people think this is gonna sound like because these get used, you know, with death metal bands that are running into already hot amps and they're using this to push the amps even harder with your, you know, the ridiculous joke setting that they do. They're so silly. They're always making jokes over there in the death metal community, turning everything all the way up like that, even that. You turn them all the way up. And it's really just to push an already hot amp with a pedal that actually has a decent amount of mids to it. Where this has like zero mids. <laughs> it's all scoop. It's all bass, it's all treble, it's all distortion. Let, let's plug it in and we'll do a quick comparison. Then I wanna try this with baritone. Oh, I should try a, I should try some of the, uh, the suggested settings as well. We'll do that after the HM2. You could use this thing as a doorstop. It's so friggin' heavy. This is a vintage made in Japan HM2, by the way. I used to buy and sell these. It was like a flipping thing. I'd buy them locally for like 50 bucks and then flip them online for like 100. I did that with like five or six of them and I landed on this one and it just felt different. It felt special somehow and so I kept it. And I'm glad I did. Yeah, the HM2 has way more mids. It's got this barky kind of mid quality to it, way lower gain. is interesting because it's not at all what people think it's gonna be. Like I use this all the time as kind of like a thickening agent. Like you get more mids with it. It's nice and fat. It's not this super bright, crazy metal distortion. It works great with other like overdrives and amp sounds and stuff like that. I use it to push into delays and reverbs for big like fun ambient swells and whatnot. Yeah, you can use it for the metal thing too, but this is, very definitely distortion use only, heavy mid scooped only, 90s punk and grunge and aggressive sounds only. <laughs> Let's see if I can dial it close to the HM2. Why am I even doing this comparison? Just because it has four knobs? <laughs>
No, not an HM2 at all. Not even really similar. Very different beasts. That was what, like three minutes of this video and I'm gonna make it, <laughs> I'm gonna make it the thumbnail. Fabtone versus HM2. Sorry for the clickbait guys. <laughs> all right, let's try some of these suggested settings. Alternative. Yeah, I guess, I guess you can get alternative sounds with this. Like when I think of alternative, like that's a, that's a like really big umbrella of music. Yeah, that's, that's Nirvana, that's Soundgarden, you know, the Smashing Pumpkins, but it's also REM. It's also the Cranberries. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of bands under alternative. I have a feeling this is not gonna sound like the Cranberries. I'm not sure what that's supposed to sound like. That is way too bright. Ah, oh, that is, that is piercing. I don't, I don't recommend that setting for alternative. British stack. Oh, bring back the treble, thank goodness. So this is supposed to sound like a Marshall. I mean, I guess, but it's got this really bright nasal thing going on. This is why I never use suggested settings. I never agree with them. Fab lead. I mean, I can't really disagree with whatever it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, you, you could use that as a lead. Jeez, that was way too bright. That hurt, it was so bright. I mean, I guess, I guess like if, if you're going for like a super ridiculous treble boosted sort of sound into a hot tube amp, that's gonna give you all your mids. The, the mids are gonna come from your amp pushing into tube compression and tube distortion and stuff like that. I, those sounds can, can be very useful. Blues solo. This one has the treble turned all the way down and then I'm going to I'm going to move on to the baritone after this. What are they What is this This has gone the other way where it's so dark. It's got a real like cocked wah thing going on, but the, the, the wah is on the heel. <laughs> oh man, what other settings are there? Face melt, I believe it can melt some faces. Late 60s, Mr. Hard Rock. And then some settings to go with the Cool Cat Chorus. Let's, let's try late 60s. Wow, treble's really high, gain is really high. Bass is really low. Oh, this is going to be dangerous. Did they try these settings before they committed them to print? That, that was too bright. 
All right, baritone time. I have a bass now too. Steve, uh, Steve left the Eastwood bass here. It's behind me. I could try it with a bass. It'd be through my Princeton's. I don't have a bass amp. Maybe this will be an ultimate baritone distortion, right? I mean, to be fair though, baritone is kind of cheating. Every distortion, every fuzz, every overdrive sounds amazing with baritone. It just does. That sounded really cool, right up until when it didn't. Okay, just a moment. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I'm back. We had a little bit of a family drama here. <laughs> the kids were fighting and my wife was on the phone with the doctor. The joys of working from home. <laughs> All right, I was doing the baritone and it sounded great. Baritone makes all dirt pedals sound great. I think we can agree on that. I'm gonna try the bass that I have back there and then we'll call it a video, okay? Now, I am not a bass player by any definition. I am very much a guitar player holding a bass right now, asking it to cooperate with me. I have not tried anything like this through my Princeton, so I'm a little bit concerned. This is an Eastwood bass, by the way. And I honestly have no idea what this is gonna sound like.
Is that a sound bass players want? Try to use my fingers. I don't know what I'm doing. Bass players, give me some hot tips on stuff I can do to make content just for you when I'm messing around with pedals. I don't know, I think it sounded best with the baritone. It's very much doing a pure 90s distortion sound <laughs> with a regular guitar. But what do you guys think? I want to know what you think about this now classic pedal, an infamous pedal. The Dan Electro Fab Tone. I'm glad I tried it. I don't think it's going to make its way into my personal rotation. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to try something that I've been thinking about trying. If you want this pedal, I'm gonna give it to you. I will give you this pedal. And the way that you win it is you're gonna to go to a friend's YouTube channel. I'm gonna pick a video from a friend's YouTube channel. I'm gonna put it in the description. Click the link, subscribe to their channel, and comment on the video. Scoop those mids. Yeah. And then I'm going to have them pick the winner. They'll, they'll get all your information. They'll do the work. <laughs> and uh, then I'll send you the pedal. Let's see how this turns out. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude, nasty comments, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, and stay grounded.